You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're gonna hit a good one and most of your playing partners are gonna struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are gonna share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey there everyone, Robin Rosada here with Top Speed Golf and today we're gonna talk about how to hit your irons pure every time. I've got three easy steps for you, three things we're gonna talk about how you can get those irons and hit them nice and solid every single time. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and get started talking about the first part of how to hit your irons solid. And that first part is actually shallow at the golf club. So let's go ahead and take a look to see what that really means and what I see commonly with a lot of people. Shallow at that golf club, we want that club, the first move on our downswing to move in this direction. So the number one thing I see is a lot of people when they come down is get, they get a little bit too steep. So I got my trusty alignment stick here. I'm gonna place it right here by halfway in the line, my alignment stick and halfway on the club. I'm gonna take a, I'm gonna grip it, and on the way down too steep, you would see I'd be almost be piercing my foot down on the ground. So that is too steep. So from there, a lot of people, when they get too steep on the way down, they'll either kind of cast the club, and that causes them to get hit it a little bit behind them, or adjust to thin it, and then the last second, or right the last second, like we see a ton of people do, is they'll flip. Well, I can't really do it with this alignment stick is a flip right through impact. So that's what we need. That's also, if we don't shallow out that club, we get a little bit too steep in the way down. We'll get a little bit too heavy. So we want that club. This is the reason why I have my alignment stick here. It's a good visual aid to see to how we can shallow out that club. I'm gonna set up to it like I normally would. And on the way down, for every tour player, when we, they're shallowing the club, this extension of the butt in their club is gonna be pointed either at the ball or just outside of it. Like I said, I have a tendency sometimes to get too steep. We want that to shallow it out early on the way down. We want that butt in the club to point outside of the golf ball. That's gonna square everything up really early in our swing and give us a pretty good chance of hitting it pretty straight and pretty solid. And that's why it's really important for you to shallow the club out early. A couple of things I talk about in videos in the past, how to get that feeling if you didn't have that alignment stick, is to get that right elbow kind of tucking in. You can see where it does if I just take my right hand here my right elbow's gonna tuck in, you can see it's gonna shallow out that club early. Or we can use, if that, if that doesn't work, let's say you don't have the flexibility to do that in your shoulders there, you can take your right hand and all you're gonna do is feel like, I don't know if you remember when, I remember when I was younger, I had a pro that used to teach me to hold a tray at the top of my golf swing. I'm gonna try to, we call that, uh, correct me Clay if I'm wrong, extension on our way down. Yeah, so extension, so on the way down, when our right wrist to feel a little bit of extension, you can see that angle. So I see a lot of people when they're either casting, coming over the top, flipping at it, not really shallowing the golf club too steep, their right wrist on the way down is almost going to create this angle here. So not much extension. You want to create that angle. You can see my right, the top of my right hand is getting closer to our, my forearm. So that's kind of another way to feel shallow at the golf club if you can't really do it with that right elbow. You can do it with your hands as well. And for me, that works really well. You can see my butt in the club and now, gonna point outside that golf ball, not getting too steep. So the second part we're gonna talk about is actually lag. Why we create lag, the importance of lag, and how that's very important to hitting your irons really solid. Okay, so guys, so we just talked about shallowing that club early. So let's go to the progression here, the sister of shallowing out early. So we've shallowed out early, but now we need to create lag. We need to create this angle. When this angle of the club is sharpened up to our shoulders here, all the way down and through impact, why do we create lag? Kind of going on what I was saying before as far as shallowing at that club. You know, you see a lot of people, they try to hit down on the golf ball. So what do they do? They get too steep, okay, going back to shallowing the club. But also what they do is throw the club out, kind of casting it, also flipping at it. So there's a lot of manipulation in order to hit it solid there. You got to do when you're casting it or flipping it. We want to create this angle, have this angle of lag. You can still see that when I was talking about before as far as that extension of my right wrist, all this lag coming into the golf ball, that angle is sharpening up here. So I got a really good drill for you to feel. It's gonna, I'm gonna feel like my hands are coming in really low. So I'm gonna take my alignment stick here. It's gonna be right here somewhere behind me, about a foot out in front of the golf ball. So here's a golf ball, about a foot out, and about two feet behind me. I'm gonna sit that club at an angle. Hopefully I can get it right around 45 degrees, right about there. And what I'm gonna try to do is not only have my hands, that's really being friendly with me, but if I'm gonna really try to have my hands get low behind, below that stick here, if I can get it really aggressive, I can go right here. There we go. So I'm gonna feel my hands get low underneath this stick, and what that's also gonna help me do is shallow out that club 
early as well. So you're going to shallow it out and get low. So you can see from this angle right here how that's forcing me. If I were to cast a club or come over the top, you can see I'm going to hit this club right here every time. This is actually a drill that I saw Brooks Kepka do a lot. He shallows out that club very well, creates a ton of lag. So he does this here. This is drill. Feels like his hands are coming in nice and low, but I mean by low. So now you're creating this angle here with the, the club shaft that's parallel to the ground with a ton of lag. So you got all this lag here, but now we actually need to talk about releasing the lag. The number one thing I, he I hear the worst part that the pros or teachers do is they teach people to hold on to all this lag. We actually need to release that lag. That is not going to be a very good thing to feel lag is feeling it all the way through impact. That's creating tension and a lot of other things we don't really want to do. We need to learn how to release all that lag. We shallowed out all this lag, how to release it, and that's going to be the third part in this series here. Okay, guys, so the third part about this video is now that we've created, we've shallowed out the club, we've created a ton of lag, but how do we release the lag? What does it look like an impact after all that lag we've just created? So as I'm stepping into the golf ball here, I've created this great angle, so I shallowed out, created this awesome angle of lag, I'm still getting here to where the club, club shaft is parallel to the ground. Now, be in mind, I want you to understand, I mean, you still want to rotate your lower body through all of this. Don't forget about that, of what your body is doing as well. I'm just talking about what the path of our hands, I mean, the what our arms and upper body are really doing. So I've created all this lag. Now, how do I release it? Like I said in the last part with creating lag, I see a lot of people, when they work on it, they're trying to hold it off so much so they can really feel like their hands are getting ahead of it. We actually need to allow that club to release on through. So if I'm pinning here, this is my nine iron right now. So this is about just a fraction above the middle of my stance. As I approach the golf ball, all this lag, as my hands begin to approach the golf ball, so right now it's about where my right knee is at, about close to where the golf ball is. As it's starting to approach, you'll notice that my hand, my left hand, is going to start to square up. I mean, it's going to kind of feel like it's bowing out, releasing the club. You can see my club head is starting to square up to the golf ball right now. So as it's approaching the golf ball, right now my hand's right above the ball. My left wrist is starting to bow up. So you can see I still have some lag, but now it's starting to release on through. And now the handle of my club is actually moving in an upward direction. So I'm turning it up. So the feeling I have is actually in my, my two, my ring finger, my pinky finger. I'm really trying to feel like that's kind of gripping just a fraction tighter than it would be the rest of my fingers. That's going to kind of move that handle in an upward direction and also allow my left hand to kind of bow out my left wrist so at an impact. I'm nice, have some good shaft lane. My left wrist is slightly bowed. I have some extension in my right wrist, kind of pushing down in, into my, my left hand. And now I'm at a really good impact position, allowed all of that lag to release. And then I can go ahead and release the club like I normally do. So that's kind of releasing all that lag. It's really important. Don't hold on to the lag, allow it to release. So let me try to incorporate all of what I just said and see if I can pull one and stick one here close to the pin. Well, I definitely hit a salad. I'll well, play it safe, middle of the green. All right, guys, so good luck working on that. Trying to hit your irons nice and pure every single time. Hey guys, great to have you here today. And I tell you, this is gonna be one of my favorite videos I've done in a while. You know, over the last couple of years, I've heard a lot of talk about how divots don't really matter. We can't tell a lot of, about a divot. Uh, a lot of teaching pros out there are saying, well, you know, they're not a good representation. I've seen players that didn't take a divot at all and hit a great shot or players that take really deep divots and hit good shots. And I'm not saying that's not the case. I'm not saying that divots are absolutely 100% the only thing that matters, but I'm saying they're pretty daggone good feedback. I mean, when else in golf, I'm guessing that you don't have a camera crew with high speed cameras following you around during your round of golf. When else do you get direct feedback on what happened at the most important part of the golf swing, which is when you hit the ball? Whatever your divot tells you, there's a ton of great information in there. So we're gonna go over today how much is too much when you're talking about hitting to the right? Should my divot be pointing to the right or to the left to hit a nice straight shot? And you'll actually be surprised to hit a straight shot, you don't want a straight divot. I'll go over that. So how much is too much? How much is not enough? How deep should my divots be? If they're too deep, what's that gonna cause me to do? If they're too shallow, what's that gonna hurt for me? And then we'll talk about the number one most common thing that I see, which is the lie angle of the club. When that toe gets too far down, how that can cause you to thin almost every single shot and how roughly 90% of the players that I see have that toe too far down. We're gonna go all that and over all that and more. And one of the best examples before we get started any farther in this, let's take a look at 
arguably the best player of all time, playing the best golf of all time. This is Tiger Woods from the early 2000s. You take a look at this range session, this picture that I'm showing on the screen, look at those divots. Those are perfectly level with the ground, perfectly square. It looks like you took a razor blade, a scalpel, and just shaved the top layer of the turf off. Look how nice and clean and crisp those are. So if divots don't matter, how could it be possible that the greatest player of all time is making divots that look so much different than every other player's divots that you see. And how players that you walk up and down the PGA Tour, their divots are looking very similar to the divots you're seeing there. Walk around the, the driving range at your local club, you're not gonna see very many of those divots. So this is all about the divots. We're gonna talk about how you can improve your divots, get direct feedback, and start playing better golf today. Let's go and get started. Okay, so let's start with one of the most interesting things that I see, which is the lie angle of the club and how that can affect not only the direction the ball goes, but also how cleanly you hit the golf ball. So let me grab, my, I have my seven iron here, and what I'm gonna do is show you, I've marked with a black dot, I've marked the, the center of the sweet spot there. So ideally, what I'd like to have happen is I wanna make contact with that golf ball right on that, that black dot. I would prefer, if I'm gonna miss it, for it to be a little bit higher. Typically that's gonna launch a little higher, get you a little bit extra distance. If I go a little bit lower, I'm gonna to tend to thin the ball. It's gonna add some spin, I'm gonna lose some distance. So why does this matter when we're talking about the lie angle of the club? Well, one of the most common things I see is when players are coming into contact, and I'll show you why in a minute, that toe starts to go down. And if you notice that black dot, as I start to raise that toe, or I start to let that toe come down, let's imagine I'm coming into the ball with my toe digging first, Look how much higher off the ground that black dot is. So it's no longer close to the surface. Now, if I have a tight lie, if I don't have a perfect lie, no way I'm making contact with the golf ball on that black dot. It's gonna be thin every single time because the center of gravity or the sweet spot of my club is now lifted off the turf. I could also go the same thing with heel down, but that's very rare. I don't see that very much. Now, it's also gonna affect the way your shots are flying. So here I have a little uh, device that just shows me where my face is pointing. Now, if I raise that and make the toe down again, look where my club is now pointing, or the face is now pointing. It's pointing to the right. So if I'm hitting down the fairway and my toe starts to go toe down, now I'm gonna be going into the right side of the green. So a lot of players struggle with those blocks to the right. We struggle with those slices. And a lot of that is because that toe is coming down here. So a great way to know if you're doing this is to see if you're standing up in your swing. The most common thing that I see is players will come out of their posture, start to flip the club a little bit, and now all of a sudden when I do that, my toe, because my hands are coming up, my toe's digging down, I'm getting those thin shots, I'm getting those blocks to the right, and I'm not gonna get the solid strike that I want. What I want you to feel, if that sounds like that's something that you may be doing, is I want you to feel like in your downswing, you feel like your weight is coming back. As you open up, you're gonna be more toward your left heel. So instead of being on my toes and standing up and flipping, I'm gonna be more toward my heel and my toes gonna to feel like it's almost lifting off the ground like that. I'm exaggerating there, but that's the sensation that I want you to have. Here, my weight's going toward the heel of the foot. All right, and that's gonna allow that, my hands to be lower and it's gonna allow me for a nice square, solid contact on this golf ball. Now, if I do this correctly, I'll try to go ahead and uh, show one here at contact. Now, I think one, this is one of the reasons that people give divots a bad rep. This is rough Bermuda grass. This is not gonna make a perfectly square divot no matter how good I hit this. This stuff is thick, it gets kind of tangled up, it's gnarly. It's also growing in this direction, so it's growing back into me. So typically it's not gonna make as clean a divot when I do this, but if we really pay attention, I'm gonna take a little extra deep divot here and we'll still be able to tell something about whether or not our toe was up or down when we did this. Let's go ahead and try one out. There we go, so a nice straight shot, just a few feet right of the flag. And what I'll notice here is if I kind of tap down this divot, and if I just look at this, kind of clean out a few of those extra pieces of grass that got stuck on there, didn't quite get chopped off, what I'm gonna see here is this back line of my divots is pretty nice and square. I'll notice that the, the rough grass didn't quite come out perfectly square on this. It's not that dollar bill shaped divot like we would wanna see if we're hitting on Bermuda or something like that. But if I just look at, I came down and hit the golf ball and then just right in front of the golf ball, what was my club doing as it interacted with the turf? I'll notice that's nice and square and that's a really good sign that I wasn't toe down. I also hit that ball really solid right on the middle of the sweet spot. 
So that's another sign that I wasn't toe down. I would have a tough time hitting that ball solid. Now, if you're doing this incorrectly, what you're gonna notice is you're always gonna be wanting to put the ball in the fluffiest lie. You're gonna be kind of scooting it around here and you're always gonna say, okay, let me get this ball perfectly as high up in the air as I can. And again, the reason that you want that fluffy lie is because when that toe comes down, it lifts the center of gravity off the ground. And now you're trying to cheat to get the ball up as high as you can. Also, if we flip a little bit and we tend to not take a divot at all, then we're gonna to wanna to have that ball as high as we can. That way we can kind of flip, not take a divot and still hit it solid. So that's the second thing I wanna talk about here. And we can see, actually before we move to that next piece, let's take a look at a few pictures of players' divots that are toe down. So what you'll notice is the outside of the divot is hit first. So the toe, because it's coming down, makes contact with the turf first. It starts to cut the divot. And then as the club continues down farther and farther, then the heel comes in and it starts to cut the divot. One of the mistakes that people see there a lot of times is they think that when they see the front edge of their divot pointing to the right like that or, or crooked like that, they think that their face was open and the face was actually pointed to the right. The face was pretty square. It's just that the toe was coming down in there first. So now let's talk about the depth of the divots. All right, so what happens if we're hitting it too thin? We already talked about, you know, how a flip, we want it to really tee that ball up nice and fluffy on a lie. That way, when the center of gravity still comes up off the ground, that we're gonna be able to hit it fairly solid. Now, when you get on those tight lies, you may know, I'm gonna give you a couple symptoms here and you can tell me if this is you. If you're on pretty short grass, a tight lie, and it makes you really uncomfortable, you feel like you're probably not gonna hit a very good shot, that's a good chance you're either flipping and kind of pushing the, the, the club doesn't have enough forward shaft lanes, you're not really hitting down and through, or that could be a good case that your toe is down a little bit. If you tend to not really take very much of a divot, so you get on that tight lie, you have to pick the ball perfectly clean. Again, you're probably standing up and flipping a little bit rather than having that forward shaft lane there. And if that's the case, if that's you, you're hitting these thin divots that really don't exist, what I want you to work on and, and the reason you do need to work on this is because if you don't have a perfect lie, it makes it almost impossible to hit a good shot. If you have the right technique, you can hit a good shot from any lie. What I want you to work on here is what I call impact glide. And this is what all the pros are doing. Some people call it the flat spot through impact. We can call it whatever we want to, but here's what should be happening. I want my hands to work down really low as I'm coming into contact. So my hands are coming down lower and you'll see from here, if I really exaggerate from this, if my hands got super, super low, my club is already on the, the ground here and already touching the turf. Now, as, as the butt end of this club raises up, that club head is gonna glide across the turf. So you want that to be nice and flat. I want my club to be coming down with the, the, the turf, coming down as my hands turn back up, that club's gonna come in really level and glide across the turf. Now, if I'm flipping at the ball, if I'm feeling like I'm standing up and flipping, what's happening is, my hands are never getting low. They're staying high and I'm pushing this club head down toward the turf and my club is more like a V. My club's coming down, hitting the ground and then coming back up again. I don't have that spot where it glides through the turf. Now that's a big problem because if I'm not having the club head level with the ground for a long period of time, I've only got that one point that I can hit the ball solid. Now if I have my club head gliding through the turf, I could hit either one of these golf balls and they'd still be fairly solid, pretty nice shots because my hands are coming low. As I rotate my body and come up on a round, my club head still keeps coming down. I could hit this ball at the beginning of my divot. I'd be coming down and getting a little deeper and deeper in the divot. I could hit this ball and it wouldn't have that much dirt between the club head and the golf ball. That's exactly what you saw with Tiger Woods when we showed those perfectly square, clean level divots. That's how he's doing this. So if this is something you're struggling with, go ahead and stand up, grab a club. And here's what I want you to practice. I still want you to hit down and through this golf ball, but I want you to feel like your legs go ahead and bend a little bit. Get a little bit of knee bend and let those start opening up. Get those hands lower, right? If I don't have any knee bend and I'm standing up, I'm high away from the ground, I, I can't get close to the ground, I have to flip. I want you to get some knee bend, get lower, and then as you come through the shot, feel like your butt into the club turns up and in. Now your club head is still gonna hit the ground. I'm still gonna be letting that club head brush the turf, but it's not gonna be digging. It's gonna be coming in nice and level. It's got that really clean, crisp sound to it when we do this correctly. So let me go ahead and try to hit a shot here. I already did a few practice swings here, and you'll see how my divots are fairly level. I'm not gonna have one divot 
chopping way down in the ground. If I hit 100 shots, I want all those to be fairly level, and I'll know I'm doing this uh, perfectly correct. All right, so we'll see on that one. Again, I made a divot. I went ahead and exaggerated and really tried to hit down on it, but you'll notice the divot isn't super deep. You can still see some roots popping up. You notice in these other divots too, the roots are still popping up there. If I was really chopping down on that, instead of my divot being four or five inches long, about the size of a dollar bill, they're always gonna be a little shorter in this thicker Bermuda grass. If you're on bent grass or really tight grass that's uh, wet outside, the divots may be a little bit bigger, but we don't want them to be way deep to where they just cut right through the divots and you see raw dirt. You wanna see those, those uh, excuse me, cut right through the roots of the grass. I wanna see roots of the grass kind of sticking up and I know I'm doing that correctly. Now, if I'm getting too deep of a divot and I'm really chopping down, most all the time what I see is the players are coming too far in front. They're swinging over the top. Typically you have a slice. You're having that ball kind of curve from left to right and that's kind of chopping down on the ball. Now from there, what you would want to work on is coming a little bit more from the inside. So probably one of the biggest tips we talk about is what we call the compression line in the top speed golf system. And what that means is if you look at my left ankle up to my left shoulder, with great golfers, even with short irons, that's gonna be basically straight up and down and go a little bit farther back until you get to driver. What I see a lot of players that are struggling coming over the top, they're getting in front of the golf ball. Now my shoulder is all the way in front of my left ankle. That puts me in a position where there's no way I can swing anywhere and hit this golf ball except coming down over the top and getting that really steep divot. So if you're taking those steep divots, feel like your head is a little farther behind the golf ball. And as you rotate on through, feel like you're coming from the inside and coming a little bit more out to the right. That's really gonna help you to shallow out those divots. All right, so now let's talk about the direction. Which direction should my divot be moving? We've all talked, to, we've all heard before that if we wanna hit a draw, we gotta make sure our divot is going out to the right. Now that's partially true. If we wanna hit a big draw, that's the case. If we wanna hit a draw, we actually want a dead square divot or a pretty daggone close to being square divot. And here's the reason. If you imagine your swing like a giant hula hoop, the back swing is coming up and in. The down swing, not only is my club moving down, but it's also moving out to the right. So it'd be kind of moving out this direction. Now, as I get to the bottom of that hula hoop, my club face would be dead square. My club direction would be dead square. Everything's going right toward the target. And then as I come past the bottom of my, my hula hoop or the bottom of my arc, now it's moving in and to the left. So anything on the downswing before the bottom of the arc or before the bottom of your divot, that's moving more to the right. So if you imagine that hula hoop again, the very bottom of that hula hoop is the bottom of your divot. You're hitting the ball before that. So what's happening when I'm hitting a draw, my club is still working down and out to the right. It's still going out to the right a little bit. I hit that ball and my club is still working on its way down to the bottom. So my club's moving a little out to the right. I make contact with the ball, and then it starts to square up. At, by the bottom of my divot, it's dead square, and then it starts to come back to the left. So if I'm trying to hit a little two, three, four yard draw, really not very much movement on it at all, I wanna see these divots to look pretty square. And that's basically what I was hitting in those shots that you saw earlier. So if I lay a stick down here, kind of showing the overall direction of these divots, you're gonna see those are pretty square to where my target was. That's that nice, small draw. Now, if I wanna get a little bit of a bigger draw, then I'm gonna have my divots pointing a little bit more to the right of that, really come a little bit more inside out, and that's gonna help me to hit a bigger draw. Let's go ahead and I'll hit one here and really try to hook this, and we'll watch it on my flight scope so you can see the flight of that ball, but I'll really try to hook this here, and let's see what the divot looks like. There we go, so that started toward the right side of the green and then drew back to the left side of the green. Now, if I look at that divot, I really chopped down on it, but that divot's going more in this direction. So I've really come, come inside out. Now, if you're trying to play that nice little draw, I don't want those divots going way out there to the right side of the green. That's too much. If you do this, what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna struggle to be consistent. You're gonna hit some fantastic shots. You're gonna really compress them that draw that just takes off and really rolls, gets a lot of roll out. Those are great, the one out of 10 that you really hit good. But if I do this a lot, what's gonna end up happening is, if I don't quite hit it right, I'm gonna get a big block to the right. And if I do a little too much and I release that face, all of a sudden that snap hook comes in there 
and that ball really goes to the left. So I really don't want these big divots to the right. Same thing with divots to the left. If my divot starts going, you know, 15, 20 degrees to the left, if I hit a shot and I look at my divot and it's pointing over to the left edge of the green, that's gonna make it very difficult to hit a good shot. And the reason is my club is moving across the golf ball. So I have to open the face up the right amount. That adds loft, it adds more of a glancing blow. You're gonna lose some distance. So if you're losing distance right away, the first thing I would check, see if your divots are going more toward the left side of the green. And that's gonna help you to really feel like you swing more out to the right. You're gonna pick up 10, 15 yards right away. All right guys, so let's recap and talk about at the end here, what is the perfect divot? Now, number one, my toe is not gonna be down and it's not gonna be up. The sole of this club is gonna be perfectly flush with the ground and that's gonna make the leading edge of this divot really nice and clean cut and square. Now I have a picture on the screen that's from a divot that I hit with some good turf. I'm down grain, I'm on some tightly nipped turf and it was nice and soft so I could take a perfectly cut divot. So you'll see the leading edge of that is perfectly square. That's telling me that the sole of my club was coming in really nice and level. Number two, how deep was the divot? You'll notice on that same one, it's not a real deep U-shaped divot. So it didn't chop down and then come back up. I had that impact glide where my hands are going low to high and that club face is traveling with the ground. So you'll notice that's a pretty nice and level divot. You can see the bits of the roots kind of sticking up there. That's when you know you've really hit it perfect. Nice and square too. So the last piece we talked about there is that divot pointing to the right or to the left. Now I know you can't see my target in this one, but it's actually pointing really nice and straight, maybe even just slightly left of the target, which would be what I want for a straight shot. So again, anything to the right of the target is a bit too much of a hook, even a draw, or a bit too much of a draw, even a hook. Square to the target is a nice draw. A little left is a straight shot, a lot left, and I'm glancing across it and really getting a bit of a glancing blow, not really gonna get the distance I want. So if you can get your divots to look as close to these as possible, that would be fantastic. The last thing I'll leave you with here, the conditions matter. Today I'm hitting from really thick kind of gnarly Bermuda here in Florida. You're not gonna typically have those perfectly clean cut dollar bill size divots, those aren't gonna happen. If it's really wet outside, you're gonna have a little bit of a thicker divot just cause your, your club's just gonna cut through the turf so much easier. If it's really dry and hard and baked outside, you're not gonna have as much of a divot. So take into condition what the, the turf is like. That's gonna affect the divot. So it's not one hard, fast rule that says every single divot has to be like a dollar bill. They will vary, but still pay attention to those details we talked about. You're gonna have so many more clues from the one thing that tells you what your contact was doing, which is your divot. Hey guys, welcome back to Top Speed Golf. I'm Robin Rosado, and today I got a great video for you to help you hit your iron solid. So let's go and get started. All right guys, hitting your iron solid. Well, let's go and first take a look at the most common thing that I see when people are really struggling at hitting their irons, or really anything for that matter. And the most common thing we see in golf is that people are gonna come into it flipping the golf club. So that's when this club head is now beating my hands. You know, I think I talked to a lot of people and the reason why they do that is because they see all these tour players or, or guys on the range hit it really high. So by us flipping at it, it does create more loft in the golf club. But the reason why you're struggling hitting it solid, so maybe it's chunk or thin, maybe every once in a while you hit it pretty good, it's all on timing. Because if you're flipping at it, whether it's too early, maybe you're hitting the ground beforehand, or if it's too Again, probably too early, then you're catching too thin. So there's a lot of compensation going on when we're flipping at the golf ball. So our goal here today is to create more shaftling and impact. So that's when the hands are leading the club head and we're compressing that ball pretty good. But I'm gonna talk about two things. The first one being what's happening with our lower body. And the second one being what's actually happening with our hands at impact to help us get this nice shaftling at impact and compress the ball and hopefully have you hit the ball more solid. All right, so the reason why we wanna talk about our lower body is because it's important to get our lower body out of the way. That's one thing I want you to remember. Because if my hips stay square at impact and all this speed is coming down my hands and the club head and my hips stay square, this, my hands and club head are gonna to wanna to pass my body. So either if I say to you, let's create more shaft lane or, or you're feeling that, well, there's a good chance you're gonna hit it way out there to the right and not all that great if my hips are square. So then what you're gonna do is they stay square, the club head's now gonna come in passing those hands and then you're flipping at it to try to hit it solid or maybe try to hit it high. 
So you've always heard the term, oh, keep your hips up on that wall. You wanna get into your posture, imagine a wall behind you here, and you wanna keep your hips up on there. Well, that's not wrong, but I'm gonna tell you something that I'm sure you've heard a ton of, but we wanna keep our hips individual. So when you imagine that wall behind you, you wanna take your right hip and place it on that wall, and now left hip and place it on that wall. The reason why we think individual hips is because it gets us moving easier and rotating better, especially with our hips and getting these hips out of the way. So the drill I actually want you to focus on, I want you to grab an alignment stick, set up to the golf ball like you normally do, and place an alignment, the alignment stick right on the back, your back front foot heel, and you should feel pressure onto my, your front hip here. So I feel it on my left back pocket here. So when I'm rotating back, my right hip would be hitting that wall behind me, but on the way down, I wanna feel like my left back pocket is pushing this alignment stick back, not just keeping it there. I want you to feel like you're pushing that alignment stick backwards. And when you're rotating open, now we wanna feel like this lead hip is actually going higher than my trail hip, and especially at impact. On average, our lead hip is about 20 degrees higher than my than would be my right hip at impact. So as you're coming down, go ahead and press, crush that alignment stick away from you, crush that wall behind you, and that left back pocket and your left hip is opening way up. So now you're setting yourself up to having free hands at impact so then you can create a ton of shaffling. So go ahead and do, without even hitting the ball, go ahead and do about 50 just practice swings, just feeling this left back pocket crush that wall behind you, press up against that alignment stick, so then you're creating new muscle memory easy that way. All right, so we just got our hips out of the way. Now it's gonna make it really easy for us to create some shaffling with our arms and our hands. So this drill, which is my favorite drill, I saw Brooks Kepko using it uh, you know, one time or a few times, and, and uh, obviously it's done really well for me, just won the US Open. So what we're gonna talk about here is low hands. When we're flipping at it, what I see a ton of, if you look here from the down the line angle, you notice my hands get pretty high. This would be in high, this would be low. So we're flipping at it, hands are coming in really high. The feeling I want you to have is the hands are coming in low into impact. You notice here that I'm able to still store up a decent amount of lag coming into that golf ball. And then obviously, you know, we release it coming into impact. So how do we do that? And how do we get these lower hands? Well, you're gonna set up to like you normally do. And I want you to place an alignment stick. You're gonna be about a foot outside of this ball you, you're hitting here and just in line with my back foot. And I'm gonna place this about a 45 degree angle into the turf as best as I could. You'll notice if I come down in the impact, if I flip at it, you can see where the club is gonna hit this alignment stick. If I come in with low hands below this alignment stick, you're gonna see that I'm still able to maintain my lag and the, and the golf ball, and then when I release it, I have a decent amount of shaft and impact. So low hands, as you're coming down into impact, I want you to get the feeling of your right hand, we call this extension in the right hand. So when we're coming down, I want you to feel like the right hand is petting the turf, or the whole palm of your right hand is brushing the turf on the way down. Of course, this is an over-exaggerated feeling, the whole palm going downwards, but this is a good feeling to help you feel like you can maintain your lag as you come down and help those hands come in low. You'll notice here that my hands are going right above my knees here and then I'm able to deliver the club face with, with a decent amount of shaffling. All right, so let's go ahead and pair the two drills here. Hips being open, hands coming in low. So the things I want you to focus on is when you're coming in down to your downswing, yeah, you're feeling, remember, my left back pocket is crushing this wall behind me as my left hip is going higher and then my hands are coming in lower, but now as you approach the golf ball, remember, as this hip goes higher, these hands, I want you to feel like there's a string attached to the butt in your club here to your left hip. So your left hip is pulling that butt in the handle through impact, and as my hip rises, my hands also rise. You'll see that if my hands rise, I deliver a good amount of shaft lane. My angle of attack isn't too steep down on the golf ball. So the feeling I want you to have as you come into it, you're rotating open. This is coming and pulling with my left hip, but maybe to help you out, try to feel like your pinky finger and your ring finger are pulling up on the handle. Again, the reason why is that, so you don't deliver the club face too steep down at impact. So now, with left hip high at impact and open, 
and my hands are decently ahead of the golf ball, now you're ready to create some serious shaft lane. So with that being said, I want you to do at least 10 practice swings before you hit a golf ball without hitting it and getting the feeling of low hands and opening up. And then you can feel free to go and hit one with all these sticks here, opening up and my hands coming in low, delivering a club face pretty square and with a ton of shaft lane. All right, so now that we got you getting more shaft lane at impact, I touched on it a little bit, but we need to learn how to release all that lag and that shaft lane that we just created. So that's what Clay is gonna talk about here, the straight line release. You're gonna wanna click on that I card because it's the full version of that video, helping you release everything after impact. All right, guys, so good luck working on it and have fun. A common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms, so that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's going to create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're going to see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're going to see tons.